Welcome back. Welcome back. Last year we did this video talking about some summer league standouts guys to look out for. We're going to do this at the end of summer league and talk about the guys that we thought really impressed us. But for right now, summer league's just starting up. So we wanted to get you guys a video out of some guys to just watch. Like if you're just a fan of the game of ball before USA basketball starts and all that tune into these guys, because these guys are going to make an impact in the league. At least we think so. We'll start off. Just well, hold, on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Shout out Matt. Happy birthday. Uh, Again, when you're seeing these, this, it's Finn's birthday. So, July 9th, July 10th, send us some birthday wishes. These are guys that are going to make a big impact, at least in the summer league. And I think it will translate to NBA. But we'll do again, like he said, wrap up at the end of the uh, season or whatever you want to call it. And then these are just guys to watch throughout. You want to kick it off, though? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm going to go with the guy that I wanted the Cavs to draft, but he got snatched up right before us. Um, Khalil Ware. I'm sorry if I'm butchering the name, but Miami Heat got Chris Bosh 2.0. Like, I'm so impressed with how he played. I really wanted him. Can stretch the floor, can attack. The only thing that is the cause for concern is his motor is a little low, and you saw that in some instances in that game where he was just wasn't boxing out, he wasn't attacking, but like you're getting coached under Eric's bullshit. This guy's going to hustle eventually. Like he's going mm-hmm. to. He couldn't have went to a better situation for that. At least, I mean, game one, 26 points, 11 rebounds, 12 of 21 from the floor. Can't young, really. Young guys game. hustling in summer league, I got I got no problem with that. You're not hustling game one or game two, whatever. You're like you're like 19 years old. You get some fuck, dude. Fair, fair. but He'd be no. a great fit for you guys, though, particularly. Yeah, I wanted him, but. No, it's not how the cookie crumbled, but no, I'm just really impressed with how he looked. I thought that he can do a little bit of everything. You can throw him in the post a little bit. You can let him just attack off offensive rebounds. He can defensive rebound. He can stretch the floor. I know he didn't hit a three in this game, but it's just a guy that I know is going to make an impact for Miami. They get these mid to late round first, uh, first round picks and they just always play well. Like, or mm-hmm. even they'll go some random guy on the summer league team will make the roster and be really good for them. Like think of a Max Schroes or Gabe Vincent. Like yeah, these he'll guys, get, like, significant playoff burn. It's just a revolving door, and I think that Khalil Ware is going to be a really, really good NBA player. Him alongside Bam, I think, is going to be sick. It's about time they finally committed and said, "Okay, Bam, you're going to play the four. It's about time. Mm-hmm. I've been saying it for a while. Um, it's been holding the heat back. When you're going up against Embiid or Porzingis, when Bam gets brought out to the perimeter, you have zero shot blocking inside." Now you can go and switch that up, but you can allow one of them to roam because you're not putting the four and five man in the playoffs above the three point line unless you're the Boston Celtics. And while, well, yes, you're going to have to go through them to go to the finals, it's not every single moment where they're both above the three point, like outside the three point line, above the top of the key where you can't help over. And so having two guys that can block shots and stretch the floor in Bam and Chloe are, it's going to be dangerous for Miami. And I'm really. Sad that he's not a Cavalier, but I'm happy for Miami because I think this is a really good addition for them. You can be more comfortable with him switching on guards too, which I think he's actually underrated and decent at. <laughs> you're talking whoa, about Bam. Whoa, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're, you're, it's, it's not like a mayday situation if he goes out on the perimeter, switches on a guard or whatever, a pick and roll or, or pick and no, pop. Or yeah. Bam is more than capable of playing the four. I mean, think about all the teams in the league. We went small for a bit, but now everyone's going big. You got the T-Wolves, you got the Cavs, you got the Heat now. You have the Celtics, who when Porzingis and Al Horford are on the floor together, that's a big lineup. Like teams are going big. Like this isn't new. Like you're gonna the Thunder about to start Chet and Hartenstein. Like these, that's two seven footers. Like it's versatility that's big, though. It's not. Yes, you need a versatile four. Absolutely, two trees down there. Yeah, but I know what you mean. You're right. But yeah, everyone's getting bigger. Um, You got a guy guy out there? Yeah, I got a guy. Uh, Obviously, this isn't like uh, breaking news or anything, but. Keontae George, I think, is going to be poised for a tremendous summer league. Obviously, guys who get burned in the NBA the year before they play summer league normally rip it up. But the fact that he shot, I don't even know what it was. I didn't write it down. I think he was like I'll look five. I think, it was, I think it was six of 20 something. Right. So he's like, and but you're still getting it done. I think he had a 30 piece, with like 20 free throws or whatever it is. That's just being a little more savvy than five than of guys. 21, 19 free throw attempts. I'm pretty made most of them. 17. So I, I think he's going to be someone to keep on your radar. I liked him in the – I wouldn't we, say we, He's role. literally the thumbnail of the last video we did about Is summer it? league. Yeah. From last year? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's a guy you're going to want to uh, keep a lookout for. I liked his game. 
I don't know if I'd say he got minimal burn this year. Obviously, he wasn't like a huge impact player, but I, I thought he showed some flashes, and obviously he's super young. But that that's one guy I would be keeping a big time eye on. Yeah, no. I mean, this Jazz team's rebuilding. He's going to fit in, and he's going to get burn. Like, he's just going to. Um, I think he's talented enough to. And, I mean, I'm all for guys getting extra minutes or an extra – play like game reps even if it's summer league like these guys are still nba caliber players most of them so let me hit one more real quick yeah go ahead my dog ricky council i don't know what he's like the fourth or the fifth i don't know roman numerals maybe he's the fourth i can't remember but he would he he got decent minutes last year i remember like some point in the middle of the season i saw him get a poster on grant williams he's a pure slasher gets to the cup i think he has a jumper um, I mean, like I've seen him like in shoot around or whatever, but I, I didn't see it on display in these games yet. This kid just gets straight to the cup, losing Danthony Melton. I think they need it. They have a gap to fill. Obviously, Paul George is going to fill it. But I'm saying like y- you love to have a guy who can come off the bench. And I don't know if he'll do that for them this year, but you love to have a guy who can come off the bench and just fucking slash, dude, and get guys to spot up, maybe get doubles or collapses. Um, yeah, I mean, he shot five I, to ten in game one. Did he actually? Three, yeah. Well, there you go. I mean, I, I think he ha- he has that, Jimmy. He just he, he didn't really shoot it last year during the year. I mean, he didn't get much burn, but um, he also this is just, this is just good humor. There's a clip of him warming up last year. I was like looking up some of his highlights from last year so I can get like a feel after watching that game, dude. He was running like a thousand miles an hour from cone to cone, and he looked he looked like Scotty Barnes. Uh, allegations. There's it's Scotty Barnes level allegations. I'm gonna send you the video. We're done. It was the I'll funniest thing ever. I'll throw it in the video. I'll throw it in the video. It's 25. So, Ricky counts. I'm just like looking. I'm scrolling through highlights from last year, like trying to get a feel. <laughs> I see. I come across this video of him. <laughs> He's darting from wing to wing. It was so <laughs> funny. But yeah, I, I I like pure slashers. I said this in the uh, video like a week. I guess ago. he's not five to ten from three. It's more over than had his shot. Nah, I mean, ten attempts. But I I think. Well, I mean, I guess you can't argue with the numbers, but he is an absolute slasher. He just goes to the cup, like puts his head down. Uh, uh, you can put some clips in. It, he's got a tough game to describe. He's a fucking chicken with his head cut off. But I like guys like that, especially on a team with smooth scorers. You want a guy who's going to get in there and mix it up. Keep. I think he had yeah. thirty. Twenty nine, but yeah, it's thirty. Keep it on. Um, yeah, I mean, let's talk about his teammate, Jared McCain. Um, we oh, both yeah. have him on our list. He's got to look out for it just because for me, at least I wasn't really sure how he, his game would translate. And I don't really still don't really know what kind of role he's going to play. I think he dominated the ball a lot. in this That game. kid is NBA ready. Yeah. I liked what I saw. I think the lanes and how he attacked were, was really good. Um, he went 0 of six and three. He's too good of a shooter to go 0 of six again on a frequent basis. So the numbers will average out to probably around 35% for his rookie season. But that's just a guy that, for me at least, I was unsure about. But after watching through um, the highlights and a little bit of the game, I was working, so I got to see bits and pieces of it. But um, just seeing how he attacked, and I saw like a short film breakdown. I The way he attacked the basket and set up his teammates, I thought was really, really encouraging because he was throwing a couple lobs, so think about Embiid down there. Or pushing the pace and kicking it out to a Tyrese Maxey who can also do the same thing. Just it's the relentless attack and poise that he plays with, even as a rookie, I think is going to really help the Sixers team long-term. And I'm actually really, really encouraged from what I saw after game one. I'll have to watch game two, but. He's kind of the man. I mean, think about this, dude. Like, you're so fucking hated. I mean, obviously not hated by everyone. I think it's pretty split 50-50 on people who think he's a pussy or whatever. But, I mean, you go to Duke, you win over the entire school. I mean, he was the fucking man on campus last year. He plays a poised brand of basketball. Like, he's really confident, smiling ear to ear. You know, I love guys who play with joy. That one take he had smiling ear to ear coming down the court, and he went on that uh, one hand, no collect leg, kept it outside. That was super tough. But, like, the, he's just a very calm and poised guy, and I feel like – he he played like that at Duke, and he he showed that in game one. Does that immediately translate to an NBA basketball game? No, but with time it will, and I it think he's going to be a great piece. Yeah, once the speed of the game and he figures that out, I think it'll be similar to – I don't want to say like a level of – like a jump similar to what we saw from Paolo in rookie year to year two, but like the understanding of the game that you can like actually see 
in a year difference. Like I think it that easy out there for him. Yeah, I think that I mean his three point ball didn't go, but say he makes two of six, that's thirty three percent. But like still two more points. He's that's a twenty point game. And yes, <laughs> it is talk, summer league. But I've talked about this at large, and we can get into Bronny. We can use this to roll to roll right into Bronny because I want to talk Bronny real quick. This you gotta be you go you go over six from three. Dude, who gives a fuck? That kid can make threes. Like he just had a bad shooting night. It's the first game of summer league. Like guys who. Make a big deal about something. Oh, there you go. High noon alert. High noon alert. Guys who make a big deal about something like that, like the kid, it's like if you join a league and it's your first game or you or you play uh summer league even and you have a bad night, that doesn't mean you can't shoot the ball. Like you just didn't shoot the ball well. I got zero complaints about him. He'll those shots will go. They were all pretty good looks. He just there, he just missed. Now we'll do Bronny real quick. Quickly, yeah. Very quickly, because I don't think he's a big guy to look out for or whatever. But I mean, it's just we gotta get clicks here. That kid holds the ball way too much, in my opinion. If you're in the NBA, it's all about quick decision making. You got to catch it and go, catch it and swing, catch it and get to your spot, whatever it may be. He just catches it and holds it. All his looks were good looks. I thought he moved pretty well. Yeah, I think I was a little shocked at how well he created his own shot. I just obviously didn't make him. But I don't like how he he had an open three. And he hesitated, took two dribbles to the right, and then took a mid-range jumper. Obviously, that stuff gets ironed out with time. Long twos are a little bit more acceptable in college, but he the, the, we can do a whole other video on that. I don't want to waste too much time on Bronny. Uh, but he's got to get the ball and go. We've got to make a quick decision in the NBA. Yeah. Um, my last guy I have is Zach Eady. Um, we did a short little video on him after he was drafted. Um, I love the pick for Memphis. I thought it was a little high at the time, but – Honestly, for Memphis, like they have the pieces in place to where they feel as though they can compete for a title and they just need some complimentary guys. And we've seen that Jaron plays his best ball at the four. We've seen it it's with Steven Adams at the five. We've seen it with Brandon Clark kind of running five. Um, so now we get to see it with Zach Eady, who's seven foot four, two defensive player of the years are on that team. So let's just think about how good that defense is going to be. Then you got John Morant, who's people are forgetting is legitimately probably a top 15 player in the NBA. Like John Morant is unbelievably good. Might be a stretch, um, but I know what you're trying to say. Desmond Bain missed basically the entire season. Job ja played like eight games. This team is going to be good. They were the two seed in the Western conference a few years ago or something around there. Like this team is going to be good. And specifically Zach Eady, like just the unreal rebounding and putbacks. Like this is what I said. Like he's not going to be a guy that's going to drop 28 and 20 in the end with 10 blocks and like he did in college like he's not going to do that but he's going to be able to give you 14 15 and four blocks and a put back on the free throw line to help you win it to go push the game to ot ended up losing but still like that's the stuff he's going to do and um i thought that he looked good in game one i'm really really curious to see how the fit is with jaw and all that and jaron and desmond and bane and all that but I was I was I was impressed. I was too. He's Loki a vibes guy. I don't know how much I like now that I've given it some more thought. Him clogging up the paint in a sense a little bit with a slasher like Jaw, but I think it could work out. There's there's stuff that you can do like sets wise. Have him like go block to block and get out of his way or whatever it is. He's also an unreal just, screener, so you can have him set the screen. Great screener. So yeah, that's, a, that's one way you could you could get him out of the mix. I just think those weird explosive plays that come out of nowhere for a job where he's on the wing, throws that jab cross and goes middle. Like you don't want to have another defender back there, but you know, I think it'll be fine. Yeah, no, I was very impressed with Zach Eady. I'm excited to see how that works and see how he plays the rest of the summer league. Cause he's still kind of the guy right now. Yep. So that, yeah, I got one more guy. This is a low key guy. I just wrote. Uh, so Adam Flagler, okay. So he played like, whatever it was at Salt Lake City on their G League last year. For, I think he was in like high 40s or low 40s, three-point percent shooter. The, this team's just filled with so much depth. They got guys who are fighting for roster spots on that summer league team. I think, what did they give out, like two spots or three spots? Probably, if that. Like there are, the rotation's nine deep already. So, like, there's nine guys under contract, extended, whatever, in that rotation right now. So, there's not much of a hope for any one of these guys to really work its way into the rotation besides um fuck, what's his name? Nikola Topic. Maybe he can get some burn now that Giddy's gone, but 
This kid just reminds me. This kid. This kid just reminds me of like. Uh, who's a good comp? Like like Steve Novak or like. Uh, I don't know. Just a white. Just a guy you could stick in the corner and make threes. And the Thunder, so, Loki. I mean, they don't need need that, but no team is gonna hurt from having a guy you can just yeah, stick I mean, off the ball. And make six three. of fourteen from three. Shocker. <laughs> like Shocker. But but yeah. like I said, dude, you're not gonna you're not gonna judge that off of one game and forty percent over like a thirty game stretch last year in the G League. So I don't I, I just gotta keep it keep on the radar. And shout out Jack uh Golke or Go- Jokey, whatever his name is. Yeah. No. Shout out to the kid. Love to see him uh love to see him hit some shots, dude, after being on part of my take and saying there's a zero percent chance he'd ever play in the NBA. I think he might get a one year contract. It'll be a G League contract, probably, but um, maybe he gets a two, maybe he hopefully gets a two way. That'd be pretty sick. But he might get a two way. But he doesn't. He hits tough shots. I'm gonna leave it at that. I don't he think does. he has any place being in the NBA right now, or tomorrow, or a week from now, or a month from now. But the kid hits tough shots. So fair, fair. But that's it for this one. If you guys have any standouts that we didn't uh, say, or you guys think that there's someone we should be watching that we didn't mention, please let us know in the comments. But like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace.